Welcome to this week's episode of Younger Dumb. We have another guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Deja. I'm a hairstylist. Welcome to Younger Dumb. My name's Mariana, and I'm interested in learning a variety of topics. But the thing is, I'm not much of a reader. Join me as I interview a mix of people in different careers or topics to see if I'm just new to adulting and haven't learned this stuff yet, or if I should have known this information already. Thank you for coming. I'm very excited to have you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. So why don't you tell us what hairstyles you do and what you do? So basically, I'm a hairstylist. Um, I braid predominantly Afro-Black, um, African people's hair um, in mine sometimes. Um, my profession really is more towards the braiding um, and mm -hmm. less of like locks or um, like blowouts and stuff like that. Um, I would consider myself more in that area because I'm not an expert mm -hmm. anywhere else. So. Did you have to get licensed or anything? Um, so me personally, I am not licensed. Um, I only braid hair. This profession doesn't exactly have to have a license. More like locticians and like people who do hair dyeing or perms and relaxers and stuff have to have licenses. Um, some braiders do have licenses, but you don't necessarily have to, so I'm going to leave you alone. Yeah. So is it like when you get into more of like using products and stuff, that's what causes you to need a license? Yes. When you do more stuff that can have a um, heavier effect on the hair, it's really what it is. So like people who cut hair, Obviously, when you cut it wrong, mm -hmm. that's a problem. <laughs> or if you dye it wrong and the hair falls out, that's yeah. a problem. <laughs> so more like those things. And then the locticians are more just like um, how to properly take care of your hair, um, mm -hmm. how to handle your locks, and you know, do something with them. So. Yeah. So when did you get into braiding hair? When did you start? Hmm. Okay, so I'm 22 now. I started when I was 12. I started doing my own hair. And then my first like client outside of like my sister and my mom, the first lady at my church, she came over one day. I already knew that I was braiding her hair, but she didn't say that she wanted like the extensions in it. So that was my first time on the spot where I put extensions in. And since then, it's been great. Um, a lot of my first time clients were like friends from school and family. Mm -hmm. That's what really started like getting the business, really getting my motivation. Yeah. From, yeah. When did you start charging people? Um, that is a great question. I would say that I wasn't really charging people until like maybe like junior and senior year of high school, maybe sophomore year. Oh, so you did it for a while. Yeah, I did it for a while, and it's like I'm kind of like a perfectionist in a way. And like I would, I feel like I was decent at it, and I was really good at doing my own hair. But when it came to other people, mm -hmm. I was just like super nervous. I feel like that's the opposite for a lot of people. Oh yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, because I could do someone else's hair like decent, but when I do my own, I'm like, <laughs> oh, this is trash. You know? Right, and that has a lot to do with like not being able to see. I, you mm -hmm. can't see what you're doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So sophomore year, we'll say, how do you determine your pricing? Um, so that came from just the amount of time, mm -hmm. and then you have to also think about like a lot of people, a lot of people who don't braid hair don't really take this into consideration. But braiding hair is a, a big toll on your body, mm -hmm. so you have to consider that and like the amount of time it takes, and then like the products that you're using. Yeah. So say you know inflation just went up tremendously the last few years. So hair products was probably seven dollars back then. Now they're like 10, 15, maybe even 20, depending on what you're getting. Yeah. So it's not by just a flat rate for the hour, it's per hairstyle. Right. For me personally, and then also I know a lot of um, people in hair shop, braiding shop, they'll charge you by the hair texture you have, the thickness, the length. And me personally, I don't think that's fair because if you're braiding, you're going to have to braid it. Mm -hmm. regardless if it's long, short, or whatever. And I can see why they charge extra sometimes for like the thickness of the hair because when your hair is thicker, it calls for you to take a little bit more time to part, 
get everything mm -hmm. separated. Maybe sometimes people have to blow dry and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I can see that, but like me personally, like I don't have any control on how thick my hair is. Like, yeah. You know, and then a lot of people that you do hair for don't know how to do hair. Mm -hmm. So you'll get clients who come and you know, they didn't blow dry it so good. Um, but that's just like the person. Like that's something that you just have to do with mm -hmm. everything a hairstylist. So me yeah. personally, because it's like a side thing, I don't think take everything so like serious yeah. and yeah. punctuate everything. So I just do the just depending on what style it is, it's yeah. the same for everybody. But it's the length of the braid mm -hmm. is different. Yeah. And that's different. And then the size. Mm -hmm. The size adds more time and the length. Sometimes, you know, the girls nowadays, they want it to their kneecaps. I don't know what that's about, but mm -hmm. some girls get it all the way to their knee, and that's like an extra hour yeah. because you got to braid it all the way down. You got to mm -hmm. add the hair because most of, like, the packs of hair that you buy mm -hmm. aren't actually super, super that, like, yeah. that long. Yeah. Now they're starting to, like, make them longer like that, but, yeah. So everything is like a process, so that's why I just, Pick the style, this is the price for that, and if you want a longer, extra 10, smaller, extra 10, whatever. What services or styles do you offer? Um, so, I do the braiding, so you'll get, you can get two braids, you can get the box braids. I've done um, faux locks, which is like a pre-made lock, crochet it on, wrap it around a little bit. I've done... Um, Dread styles, do those, and then men's styles. I do like feet and braid, the ASAP Rocky braid. <laughs> Is that really what they're called? Yes, they are. Because that's where they got it from, ASAP Rocky. So yeah, that's what that's called. Um, and then like a lot of guys get the freestyle braid. Um, girls they get the like the front. Um, what are they called? Yeah, oh, no, I can't even think what they're called right now. Travel, travel, no, travel braid. So you'll get braided like here, mm -hmm. however many you want in the front, and then the back is box braid. So like the half. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Travel braid. Yeah. And then you have just any, you know, um, like straight backs, like the little summer style braid. Mm -hmm. You'll get the little boxed, mm -hmm. shorter braid. It's so many different things. The boho braids, that's mm -hmm. the braids with the pearls in them. Yeah, I want to try those next time. Yeah, those are cute. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen the new ones where they put butterflies in them? Yes, I have. Yeah? <sighs> Would you get it? No. No, no. <laughs> it's not as hard as you think. It looks hard, especially the way they did it with the colors in between. Yes. So when I saw it. Now, don't get me wrong. I haven't looked at a full video mm -hmm. of the process, but from the little process video that I saw, they braid the actual braid, mm -hmm. like the box braid, then they'll take it and just braid it, so you have the box braid, mm -hmm. then they'll keep the box braid one, but they'll put some hair off to the side, and they'll start adding to that side one, and mm -hmm. start like wrap, they'll just like fold it and wrap it. Oh yeah. Way. Okay. So, it's like hard, but like not. You it's hard to, for me, but it'd yeah. be easy for you. Yeah, you got a lot of patience. Yes, a lot of patience. Yeah. Would you do it if someone asked you to? Yeah. A lot of times, some clients will ask me to do something. I'm like, ooh. Mm -hmm. I got to do a little <laughs> research. A little research. Yeah. So, like, when you're a braider and you actually like, do hair consistently and stuff, when your customers come to you with different stuff that you've never done before, all you gotta do is look up a video and you're like good mm -hmm. to go. Yeah. You just need to like refresh your mind, see the different concepts, because some people break differently. Mm -hmm. Some methods work may work for you, some may work for me. So it's nice to be able to go on YouTube or TikTok or whatever social yeah. media to see how people do it. So that's what I would do. I would go do a little research mm -hmm. like, and then I'll let them know, yeah, yeah, no problem. And yeah. then I'll Think about the price. Sometimes I do a little comparison online. See how long it will take. Yeah. So yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's always like new things that you can do with that hair. Yes, braiding has been involved a lot, and that even like even like the end of the braids. First, they they used to like burn them. Oh uh, yeah, I remember that. And then they used to just wrap the the rubber bands at them and just mm -hmm. cut blunt cut. Yeah. Then you started with the pre stretch. What it's called? Pre stretch. Pre stretch. So you gotta stretch the hair, you gotta pluck it. Mm -hmm. That was back in the day. 
I was late to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty stretch. The hair was super blunt. Then we stretched it. But then in the beauty spy stories, they came out with the pre-stretched hair. So now you don't have to pre-stretch it because mm. it already is done. Yeah. Then that's when they came up with the boiling method. Yeah. Take the hot water and mm-hmm. dip it in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hair has evolved a lot. Yeah. Thank God. Because those <laughs> little burns was crazy. I remember that. <laughs> and some styles you cannot do nowadays trying to burn the ends of the hair. Yeah. That is ridiculous. <laughs> that's funny. Um, do you do anything with wigs or in song weaves? Um, no. no. I, I, mm-mm. Even on yourself? See, <sighs> um, I, I can do the braid down, obviously. I can braid your hair down. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to like the wigs, that's like a like a different type of hairstyle. Mm-hmm. Like you gotta know what you're doing. You gotta know how to bleach the lace. You gotta know how to pluck it correctly. Mm-hmm. You gotta know how, you gotta have a lot of patience for that. Mm-hmm. Like, cause there's like a million different steps. Yeah. When you braid hair, all you gotta do is, okay, you part, little gel product on there and then you braid mm-hmm. but with with the wigs it's just yeah it's a lot it and i've tried one of myself and me personally i just didn't like the way it looked and i don't like the way it feels on my, mm-hmm. my uh forehead like that yeah. yeah it's too like i don't know not really enough. One. Oh. <laughs> it, it, it feels funny so okay. yeah um i try to stay away from the wig Mm-hmm. I do a couple sewing, mm-hmm. so like traps or quick weaves. I do that on myself a lot, especially in the winter. Mm-hmm. Quick weaves and sewings, I'll do those in a hard beat. But then I'll do some on some customers too. Yeah. But don't ask me to do a wig. I did one, <laughs> one time on a friend, and mm-hmm. we were in there forever. So I was like, no, there's no way I can do this with a real client. <laughs> yeah. I can't be myself yeah. the same way that I could with a friend. <laughs> So yeah, I stay away from them. Yeah, the sewings when you do them on yourself, does it hurt? Um, How do you know not to like poke yourself? So the needles are curved. I don't know if you know that. I when didn't. You, yeah, when you use a sewing needle, it's not like a reg- regular like when you're sewing clothes. Needles, yeah, it's curved. So purposely, so when, so it's like this. So purposely, when you go in the hair, it already cooks okay like down like that so mm-hmm. you just can't just be like zooming through it like you know you just gotta <laughs> you know feel yeah. where you're at okay so no i don't ever have any pain um i'm sure i nicked myself a few times like trying to pull the needle out because mm-hmm. sometimes i can't grip it through my hands i like or yeah products on it and stuff mm-hmm. but yeah i don't really hurt myself sometimes it's tight mm-hmm. i break my hair really tight Is not on good my- it's not good up here, right? No, not on the edges. You can't yeah. do your edges. And like uh, you can do it tight sometimes, but like you mm-hmm. gotta give your edges some time yeah. to breathe. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're not gonna have any. <laughs> you definitely <laughs> wanna keep your edges. So yeah, you gotta be careful with that. And then you gotta know your um like your clients too. So mm-hmm. like for some people you can pull it in a little bit more, gather more edges than usual. But some people have more soft textured hair. Mm-hmm. If you pull too hard, you know, <laughs> you're not gonna be he'll stay there in the braid until yeah. you take it out. Mm-hmm. And that that's what probably <laughs> feels. <laughs> but yeah, you just gotta be mindful of whose hair you're doing, with mm-hmm. the edges and even like the back sometimes. Mm-hmm. Cause um and that's one thing that I learned a lot years ago. My sister will tell you. <laughs> um I used to braid really tight mm-hmm. and instead of actually like keeping the braid itself compact i would be trying to pull the hair on the scalp mm-hmm. super super t- close mm-hmm. and then like you can get like bumps in the yeah. back just because it's too tight mm-hmm. you know so i learned Vivica has learned <laughs> that's my little test dummy so yeah, yeah that's one thing that i learned to like not put so much tension on your your customer's hair, mm-hmm. but more so the braid itself. We gotta make sure the braid is good, mm-hmm. not pull it on the hair. Isn't that what the difference between knotless and box braids are? Like knotless yes. are better, are less tension. Yes, less tension. Yes, knotless are a lot better. Mm-hmm. And as you notice, you don't see very many girls walking around with the box braids anymore. Mm-hmm. And that comes a lot. A lot of people had no edges because of. <laughs> <laughs> Box, box braids used to be thick mm-hmm. at the root, mm-hmm. and some 
braiders, like if you put too much hair, it puts too much tension on their hair. Mm-hmm. It doesn't last. So, you know, box braids last, but not when they're bigger. But with the knot list, because it's just like naturally your hair at yeah. the root, it looks more flowy. Yeah. Can you explain the difference between the two of them? Yes, I can try. <laughs> um, I gotta think like someone who doesn't braid hair. Um, so when you do box braids, you have the piece of hair, you take the whole piece of hair and you just, I'm going to just say wrap it around. You just wrap it around the whole piece. Mm-hmm. But when not list, you take your hair or your client's hair, mm-hmm. you braid it as if you're doing like a regular braid and then you feed in the mm-hmm. extra braided hair. Yeah. So when I, you, that was good. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm okay, good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you did it a little bit, but yeah, you did good explaining. It. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Some people don't understand. Like, oh, I don't know how else to yeah break it down. Okay. Yeah. So then, what is the name of it when you put a like a rubber band in it and then you braid? Is that still knotless? Um. So it, it still depends on how you do it. If you take okay. a rubber band and you feed it in, mm-hmm. that's knotless. So mm-hmm. it, basically, anything that you feed in is knotless because mm-hmm. there's no knot. But you could take a rubber band. Some people will rubber band it and still do the wrap around and then start braiding. Mm-hmm. Or some people will take a crochet yeah. and like crochet the braiding hair through, mm-hmm. split your hair, and then start braiding. That's still considered like a box braid because oh, it still really? has that thickness at the root. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I tried that on myself. How did it go? <laughs> With the crochet, it, it was hard. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't like it. I when I do braids on myself, which is like rarely ever, it's knotless. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I don't. It's like knotless it. is easier for people who don't know how to braid because when you're trying to do a box braid, if it's not tight enough at the root, mm-hmm. <laughs> it just it looks funny because it's just like you got your hair, but then you got this yeah. giant knot <laughs> yeah. three inches away. I looked rough. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Not with our easier because you can feed it in and like it can be a little janky, but like it's not as noticeable as a big giant knot. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, not with is definitely what I would suggest for yeah. learning. Mm-hmm. The other thing I struggle with is if I were to do like the hairstyle you have right now because I can't add in hair. Oh, yeah. Right, like that. Like mine is okay because it's just like I just added it in while I was mm-hmm. like braiding, but yours I cannot. Like mine turned out well. It is a diff- it's called the same thing. You're both feeding it in here mm-hmm. and you're feeding it in there. Mm-hmm. But it is a whole different yeah. concept. It is hard. <laughs> Even sometimes when I do when I do the two braids, so I, this side is pretty good. Mm-hmm. But it's this <laughs> side that sends me off because my hand oh, yeah, 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 is yeah. not the same. So mm-hmm. I started my hair yesterday, then I gave up because I started with this side. <laughs> And I was upset because it didn't look how I wanted it to look. So yeah. then I came back today and was like, okay, let me do this side. I did yeah. this side. And then you had your head already done, so now you got to do the other half. True. So I I have I struggle too sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I don't want to give up. <laughs> but, yeah, patience. That's, yeah. You need a lot of patience. How long did it take you? Um. So if I, if I was, like, in a rush, it would have took me probably, like, I don't know, like 40 minutes, maybe mm. an hour. Mm. So like when I'm just taking my time, <laughs> I got a pause, I'm watching TV. You yeah. never know. Yeah. <laughs> you really don't know. But yeah, today I had my morning was pretty free. So I just took my sweet time. Mm-hmm. Just watching Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. It just depends. But if I had to give you if I had the time that I needed my hair done. 40 minutes. I have to give myself 40 minutes mm-hmm. for this. Yeah. Not, not everything the same. For this, 40 minutes. That was probably like three hours for me. Yeah, that's rough. Oh, church. I was there. <laughs> I used to be out here looking mighty wild mm-hmm. back in the day doing my own hair. <laughs> and it's like when I started doing my own hair, my mom just like gave up. She mm-hmm. didn't want to do my hair anymore because she was like, you got it. You can do it. <laughs> and like she had three daughters, so like that's yeah. a lot of hair. Yeah. So. <sighs> High school is rough. Man, you're old man. Now, now yeah, I'm good now. You. Right? Yeah. yeah, you're doing everyone in your family's hair. Yeah. Yeah. Even, <laughs> I'm down bad right now. ACO's <laughs> torn and people are still texting me, can you please? <laughs> I'm just like, uh. 
Look, I got a trip in Vegas I'm going on. Just be good by July. Oh, no, I'll be good. Okay, I'll be good. good. Yeah, I need to look good for this. When's your trip? Because I leave, I'm going to Jamaica in July. July 7th. I'll be home. Oh, good. I'll be July 14th. Okay, I'll be back, but my trip's only a weekend trip. So okay, yeah, I'll be here. Just give me a little weekend grade. I'm good. Yep, I did, I actually did, so I've been down bad for like two months now. I got injured February 7th. Mm. <laughs> I know. I love the exact date. <laughs> yes, because it was, it was heartbreaking. But last week, I did box bridge for the first time, or sorry, not just bridge for the first time. Mm. And I'm not going to lie, I struggled a little bit. Mm. It was like... The standing is like, I just get tired easy. It's not even always about the knee pain itself. Mm -hmm. It's the standing. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have any stamina anymore since I've been out for two months. Yeah. So I'm like, dang. So sometimes, like, when it was my aunt's hair that I did, I would have her stay in her chair, obviously. Mm -hmm. And because I've been doing hair for so long, I like to stand. Mm -hmm. I like to stand. It makes me feel like I'm going fast because I don't get lazy. But that time I just pulled up a chair behind her, so then I'll sit when I'm just going down, and yeah. then I part or something or start the break, then I'll stand. Yeah. And I just don't want to do that with, like, client clients, like, people who aren't family or friends or close. That's why I haven't opened it up yet. Why? <laughs> I don't think it makes you look unprofessional. I wouldn't expect anyone to stand for, like, this seven hours it might take. It's, like, not unprofessional, but I kind of get, like, I know myself. Mm -hmm. I get to get slow, getting mm -hmm. lazy. Yeah. Then I'm in my head like, dang, I don't want to do this no more. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to be doing someone's hair in that mindset. Yeah. Like, with family, I know, like, girl, I'm going to take a break. <laughs> I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go over there, eat some food, yeah. relax for a little bit, and then come back. <laughs> but you can't do that with, like, yeah. client clients. So that's why I haven't been doing those. But mm -hmm. I do have hair some more break this weekend. Okay. So the family, family, friends, yeah. Mm -hmm. So... We're going to see how the stand yeah. is going. Yeah, when, you when I come to you in July, you can sit all you want, <laughs> as long as I look good when I do. You that's will. Okay. Everybody always looks good when they read Brings My Day. No yeah. Problem. Yeah, that's true. I've gotten it done before. I always, I always leave with my little like, self-confidence. Mm -hmm. I come mm -hmm. home, take my selfies, <laughs> all this shit looks good. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's best when it's still daylight outside. You get the mm -hmm. sun, you know. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, hair is done. Yeah. Yeah, I know that too. <laughs> So what is your process like when you are booking clients? Um, How do people book with you? So I thought about doing the website things and go to the website, but my schedule is just like all over the place. So I can't just go on the website and be like, okay, here's a month of my schedule. This mm -hmm. is the times that I'm free. Mm -hmm. Come book whenever. Yeah. I don't operate like that. So sadly, some people don't like it, some people do, but just text calls, social media is the best way to book an appointment for me mm -hmm. because I can give you a more better gauge on my schedule rather than you booking online that I have to cancel or, hey, can you do this instead of this and this? Yeah. You know, it's just nice to actually talk to the person too, having that actual conversation rather than social media or not. Mm -hmm. It's just nice to make sure you know exactly. Because yeah. sometimes, like, even when you book online, People will be like, okay, there's a section for braids, the knotless braids, but then it's not always like a part where you can put in the lane, the mm -hmm. part where you can put the bobo, or yeah. like, you know. So it's nice. My clients, I'll be like, okay, what are you looking to get? They send their picture. I'm like, cool. Mm -hmm. That's the length you want. That's the size. Yep. All right, here's your price. Yada, yada, yada. Um, I do have, um, like, deposits and stuff sometimes, but. I've been slacking, but I do have deposits <laughs> and I have late fees, so like all that mm -hmm. stuff I still have. But yeah, when it comes to booking, just real mm -hmm. basic. Hit me up. Yeah. Let me know. I'll <laughs> let you know. So yeah. Do you make people bring their own hair if they're getting um, heathens? Uh, yes. So most of the time, I personally don't like going to get the hair um, just because some people, what if their hair's not black? Mm -hmm. Now they have this color that they want, but now... Or if I got the wrong color or something like that, you know. I'm like, yeah, they can send me a picture of their hair color, but that doesn't always attribute the color that it actually yeah. is. Yeah. 
Um, but sometimes, like for a person who don't get their hair done often or don't know where to get it or how to shop for it, I feel like, you know what, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll go to the store, I'll send you a picture of the color before I buy it. Yeah. Sometimes I try to be like, hey, I'm going around this time, so you know, mm -hmm. like, be on your phone. <laughs> so when I'm not in the store staying there for 20 minutes, the way yeah. you is fine. But yeah, so, you know, I'm real, like, kind-hearted. So, like, mm -hmm. if my client doesn't know what to get, they don't know what to get it. I need to take a little bit more initiative and help them out because mm -hmm. next thing you know, the hairstylist mad, you didn't get the right stuff. Now you have to go back, or yeah. you gotta now that's an extra hour because you gotta go to the beauty supply store. Then you know how many tax we need. Yeah, you know, it's just you know, it's nice sometimes. Yeah, I prefer it for me yes. because I don't know how much to buy. I don't know what kind to buy. Not for me. Yep. When, so, I, when I do it myself, I just buy, like, the basics. I just get the same color. It doesn't match my hair. But I get the same color, and it's just, like, the straight. But, like, when I got the, the butterfly locks, I was like, mm -hmm. I don't want to buy that. I'm oh, really yeah. I'm scared. That was freaking me it out. It's scary. <laughs> and I've, I've, trust, I've learned the hard way, too. Mm -hmm. I will go in the store and be like, okay, yeah, this looks like some hair that'll probably be good. Mm -hmm. Let me use this. And then you're like, oh, this is not, <laughs> this is not how the pictures look. So, yeah. I've been through it because, you know, I do my own hair, so I've gone to the store many times and got the wrong stuff. I'm just like, Ugh. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah. You know a little bit more, so, you know, it's nice. So, mm -hmm. so I try to help out when I can. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so when it comes to products and stuff, do you have different products for different kinds of hair or different styles, or do you just have, like, one basic thing you use for everything? Uh, me, personally, I have one basic. Mm -hmm. Shining Gem, Yellow Container, <laughs> that's the one. Um, but sometimes, like depending on the client, sometimes I will have to like re dry their hair, make it more, um, I hate to use this word, but more manageable mm -hmm. um, to braid. So sometimes I might use like some type of moisturizer or some bio silk or something when blow drying it just to get it, you know, it does depend sometimes on your client, but I always to to braid the um, and like make my parts and stuff always shiny gem. I always use shiny gem, and then I have a mixture of oils that I use after I go through or their scalp, and then I use um, Lava Body Foam Wrap. It's blue. Well, it looks blue. The container, mm -hmm. and then I just use the foam, put it on their hair. Let it sit for a little bit. Sometimes I might put that out. What is the point of the foam? So the foam is like a um, a setting. I want to say spray. Like setting hair. spray. Setting foam. So like it makes the braids set. Okay. Um. So think of finger braids. I know that's random, <laughs> but it molds the hair. So like mm -hmm. when you when a person gets finger braids, they use the foam wrap to get it in the shape that you want. You put it in the shape that you want and they use the foam to lay it down. Yeah. So that's kind of what the that part is for because you know some people got the little far ways at the top, take mm -hmm. the foam wrap, foam that up, mm -hmm. keep it pushing, lay yeah. it down a little bit and then like just mold it and it's, it's shiny too. Mm -hmm. Some people use um like a shine spray too, some braiders mm -hmm. and then some braiders will use hairspray. So got to be glued or any type of hairspray to like, there's always the little flyaways, like, at the end of the braid sometimes. Yeah. And they just do a neat sometimes, put the hairspray on it, rub them down a little bit. But some braiders are really trying every braid. <laughs> uh -uh. Not for you? Not for me. <laughs> Not for me. I tried it a few times. Sometimes I'll do, like, the front braids, trim it up. Because mm -hmm. depending on what braiding hair you get, some braiding hair, because now that they come pre-stretched, mm -hmm. there's a lot more flyaways, and it just looks a hot mess. You yeah. just got to clean it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, some, some people will use the hairspray and just kind of, depending on, like, what hairstyle I do, sometimes I'll use, like, the got to be um, glued spray mm -hmm. and kind of, like, mold them down. But I try to stay away from the hairspray. I don't really like how that feels. Mm -hmm. With the shining gem and, like, the lot of body, when you take down your hair, it still feels soft. It doesn't feel hard or just, like, mm -hmm. hard to manage. Because, you know, when you take down your hair, you're supposed to comb it out yeah. before you wash it. Yeah. So those two products are nice so that when you're, you know, you're taking it down, it's still evenly managed. But when you get to 
hairsprays and stuff. Now yeah. it's all all crinkly. Yeah. And just, uh, <laughs> dealing with that. I, I know I've experienced so, with so many things on myself that I know mm-hmm. I'm like nah because I just had a heart a breakdown <laughs> in the bathroom trying to do my hair. I don't want to have to do this for my clients. So I don't yeah. understand how people like that. Like. When you can literally, like, knock on your head and you hear, like, oh, my gosh, I don't like that. You could, like, scratch it and nothing moves. Uh-uh. No, I feel like that's, like, an edge thing. Okay, fine. Mm-hmm. Like, my little edges don't move. They're mm-hmm. still late. Cool. Don't you take it Put off. the whole head. <laughs> Some, so, TikTok, of course. Mm-hmm. I um have a lot of, like, braiding stuff on my TikTok feed, and you'll get, like, hair stylists like, don't do this. Mm-hmm. Some people really come with edge control on their whole like mm-hmm. head. I'm like, that's a cool edge <laughs> for your edges. You're not supposed to put yeah. don't don't put edge <laughs> control on your whole head. Okay, not even the middle part. Don't do it. <laughs> Find something else. Jam Eco Style. The yellow. What did you say? The yellow <laughs> container. That's the one. <laughs> Sign in gym, yellow container. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, edge control you should not. That's it's not really good. It's not good for your whole head. Mm-hmm. And um, what else? Bees wax is not really good for your hair. But you ever see the girls with like the slip ponytails? Mm-hmm. They use bees wax for that to like mold it down. It looks good. It does what it needs to do. Mm-hmm. But it's hard to wash. Yeah. Out. So yeah. You just gotta be careful. And products are different on each person's hair too. Yeah. Some things may work, some things won't. Do you know like the difference between like the the C's, like the four C, like all those different hair textures? C. People have license for that. Oh, I do okay. not. <laughs> um, I'm not. I can probably gauge, give mm-hmm. you an estimate of what I think your hair is, but like it's not. I'm coming out like a hundred percent. Yeah. You know, four C. That's that thick, real coarse hair. <laughs> That's that hair that looks like this length, but it's really yeah. down here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just depends. I don't know. Sometimes I can give you a case. No, oh, that's kind of looking like yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Don't ask me to be like the hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a helping hand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say is your most favorite or maybe like most effective like natural product? That you um, use. I like the shame moisture. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's what I was using a lot at first. I really feel like shame moisture was working good for me. Um, and then now I've been using shea butter. I took shea butter, put it in like a mixer, some coconut oil, like the the actual like um. It looks like that one, but it yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. but it's for hair. Okay. So not just like the actual oil oil, but the mm-hmm. one you got scoop out, the yeah. one, that one. And then like a couple oils and stuff, that's really good for your hair. Shea butter is really good for your hair. Mm-hmm. Um and then it's to help it grow. Yeah. And like it's good for your scalp, you know, nutrition keeps your hair from being like super dry because you know mm-hmm. that's like in Africa. They really take shea butter very, very serious. Mm-hmm. So it's good. Um, also, I've been using like Mel, no, Melly, M I E L L E. It's either Mel or Melly, okay. the brand. Mm-hmm. It's pink. They they got some different colors too, but the main one is pink. Um, I use a couple of those, like the curl definer one or like the hair moisturizer. Mm-hmm. So like when I do braid outs or something like that, I'll use that. And then. Rose water and rice water. Are I was going to ask you about ri- rice water. Mm-hmm. Those are good for your hair. Do you mix them together? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just saying, like, those two yeah. in general. Um, you can mix them, though. Rose water is more like... Where do you get that at? Um, it's not at, like, Walmart or any stores like that, so you probably mm-hmm. have to actually go to a beauty supply store mm-hmm. or Amazon. You can look it up on Amazon. Um, any really rose water will work. And then rice water, they're actually making, um, like, bottles in the store for them now, rather than just making your own at home. Yeah. So you have that option, too. But, yeah, both of those are good for your hair. The rose water is more like if you got, like, braids or something, you just spray it, you know, keep your your hair inside the braid moisturized. And then rice water is more like when you're washing your hair. Well, for me, mm-hmm. when you're washing your hair, I would do the natural rice water, make it myself, 
put it on there, let it sit for like 30 minutes, mm -hmm. and then rinse it out. It stinks, but like, yeah. it's good. Yeah. That you gotta put some peppermint in there. If you make it from home, so you take rice water, you take water, you put some rice in there, and you let it sit for like 24 hours max. You can do three to 24 hours. The longer you let it sit, the more better it is, but the more it smells. Mm -hmm. So you can put some orange peels in there because that's citrus, mm -hmm. orange, lemon peels, or peppermint oil. Yeah. The smell. So when you use better. the rice water, are you then like shampooing and conditioning? Yeah. Oh, so you get the smell out anyways. Mm. I <laughs> I had it so before I knew about the lemon and stuff. It's just like it doesn't like stink stink, but you you're just like. Mm -hmm. mm. That's not the natural, like, <laughs> that's not the regular, regular smell. So, like, yeah. it's there, but, like, the shampoo and conditioner is kind of, like, nasty. But, like, mm -hmm. mm, that's why I put the citrus in there. So yeah. I know for sure it's just not. No, why don't you get too close? Man? Why do you have me? I haven't used it for, like, two <laughs> weeks. But I don't, I don't scent it. I'll use it, and then I just How long do you let it, it sit? Like, 40 minutes. Yeah. So that's not okay. Like, oh wait, no, no, no. Longer. the rice water sits for twenty four hours. Oh, then yeah, but yeah. But then it's in my hair for forty minutes. Oh yeah, yeah. Put some lemon and stuff in there. Okay. I mean, I've been around you. I know you smoke it. That Thank makes you. you. So cool. Thank you. <laughs> it does. Good. Okay. How often do you wash your hair? Um. Or do you recommend that people wash your hair? Okay, so I'm gonna do recommend first because I'm not. I have problems with my hair. Um. Uh, so <laughs> recommend you should wash your hair like. No more than like no less than two weeks, um, cause shampoo is really not good. You should use shampoo all the time. So, like, if you want to wet your hair and put some conditioner in there, you can do. Mm -hmm. But if you want to use shampoo, I would say no more than like anything less than two weeks in a row. And then like when you have the braids in, mm -hmm. you know, just wash it when you take your braids out for a month or two. Some people have it in for a long. I don't know. I can't do that, but. Mm -hmm. Um, me personally, uh, my hair is always different. You see my hair different almost every time you see me, probably. <laughs> um, so I personally try to stay away from shampooing my hair, but I like to wash and wet my hair. Um, my scalp gets flaky easy. I don't know what I got going on, but I do not like that. So I will go and wet my hair in a heartbeat. <laughs> Put some condition on that, blow dry it out, yeah. or... Just let the air dry or something. So yeah, I wash my hair pretty often. Do you deep condition it every time you wash it? No, not and every time. You get it wet, but when you wash it, wash it. No. Sometimes I'll just put the conditioner in there and then let it sit for like two minutes while I'm in the shower and then <laughs> rinse it out. <laughs> then sometimes I will go take my shower, wet it or whatever, and then let the conditioner sit for a little bit. Sometimes you can just do it for 30 minutes. Sometimes I'll let it sit overnight if I don't have anything to do anywhere to go. I'll let it sit. It really just depends on what I got going on. Do you put heat on it a lot? Um, so, um, I would say I blow dry it often. Um, I won't say I straighten it too much because my hair is, um, uh, it gets very humid. When it's humid outside, it gets really frizzy. Mm -hmm. Um, so if I do straighten it, it's more winter time. Um, but I use heat protectant and stuff that makes me feel better when I blow dry it. <laughs> I did go to, um, through this moment where I was like, I'm not blow drying my hair. I'm going to just have to let it air dry. So, like, you got to put it in the two buns. You just throw it in the one bun or you got to put it in a braid so it can dry. Mm -hmm. You know, I went through that phase. That phase was nice. But I I, don't know how last. I actually did pretty good. Yeah. That's when I was at college. So, like, mm -hmm. at college, I don't have time to just sit there. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> so that was good. Um, I would say that lasted, like, Six, seven months. I was proud okay. of myself. I think I only blow dry my hair like twice that whole time. Mm -hmm. And it was probably only twice because I washed my hair and needed to braid my hair. Mm. And I would rather have my hair blow dry. But sometimes if I have the time, I'll wash it, put it in like some dookie braid, mm -hmm. and then it will be dry and then I'll go and braid my hair. Yeah. But sometimes you don't have time for <laughs> But yeah, so I said that's, that's about how often. Yeah. I try to. Stay away from that. Can you tell me 
I do not understand this. What is the difference between like flat ironing and a silk press? Do you know? Well, when you flat on your hair, you're just using a flat iron. Okay. Uh, no expert. Um, <laughs> I would say a silk press, you go through a lot more steps. A, a way, way lot more steps. And then when you do a silk press, you, you have to use a silk biosilk or a silk spray or something like that. That's where the silk part comes from. Then, like, it's just more steps. More steps okay. are the same thing, though. Mm -hmm. I don't know, that, that probably doesn't really help. But, like, say um, I wash my hair on the other side of here, I'm just going to flat on it. That's just flat on it. But, like, if I'm taking the time to do the silk press, mm -hmm. I just blow dry the mess out of it. Mm -hmm. It's bone straight with the blow dryer. Then you want to go in, bio silk it up with your mm -hmm. silk spray or whatever. And then that's when you want to take the comb and the flat arms at the same time mm -hmm. and stroke that bad boy. That the journal is going to be like one or two strokes. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Yeah. Because sometimes when you straighten your hair, you're doing like, oh. And I, I do like three, four. Yeah. So that's what the <laughs> silk part is kind of like. You're only supposed to do one or two. Mm -hmm. One or two to get it straight. And then like if you do it like a style, um, your hair stylist will straighten it. And then they might go in and put a couple bumps or curls. But those yeah. are bigger parts. And it's supposed to be like less um like. It's supposed to be more protected from the biofilm and the heat protected and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's not like a big difference though. Yeah, I was gonna. I feel like I've gotten the silk press done, but I don't ask for it yeah. when I go. So usually, if you go to the shop, yeah. most likely it's a silk press. Okay, yeah. But if you're at home, I had it. Oh, my hair looks nothing like. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I'm at home, it's flat iron. Yeah. You know, when I'm going there, so it's a silk press. You walk out of shop. You don't even go like it's it. It's all flat. Hair already falling from the wind. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's not like a big difference, mm -hmm. but it's the little things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. Because yeah. I was like, I'm pretty sure that's what I get done, but I never go there asking for that. Mm -hmm. So I just say I want to play that. Uh, yeah. And that's what they do. Yeah. Cool. Um, would you ever work? Can you work at a, um, a salon? Yeah. No. I get people asking me all the time. Mm -hmm. um, it's more like, Small businesses that will be like, no, I'm looking for a braider, like come in the shop, you know. Um, so yeah, you can work in the shop with no license, but then if you go to a place and they're a little bit more like professional based, mm -hmm. they will probably want you to have a license. But I think it just really depends on who's the owner who has the shop. Mm -hmm. Would you do it? Oh uh, no, <laughs> nope. because you don't want to do it full time, or just because you like working for yourself? Um, house fees. Oh, you would have to do that? Yes. So all the money that you say I charge you a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Now I gotta give old owner twenty dollars of my hundred dollars that is made because the light bill, mm -hmm. the water bill, some people wash hair, just like yeah. a fee for being in the salon. Mm -hmm. And it goes like some people just have like a monthly fee. So like say I made a thousand dollars over that month of braiding hair. I would have to give a certain amount, amount for the house fee mm -hmm. to the owner. I'm not trying to do that. Yeah. Why do that when I can be at home in my own <laughs> space braiding hair? Were you ever worried about like, the my safety head. of it, of bringing people to your own house? Um, yeah, it's not really safety so much because I don't just be braiding like anybody. Mm -hmm. Like I do get a little cautious with certain people. Yeah. Um, See? Nah. Okay, good. <laughs> but then, like, sometimes if I do get cautious, like, mm -hmm. I'll make sure, like, I'm not by myself at home. Okay. But, yeah, I don't really, that was a hard one because, you know how many people know where I live? Yeah. Oh, it just makes me cringe <laughs> sometimes because, like, uh, why do you know my address? Why do you know I live? And it's just, like, mm. would you go to people's houses? Yeah, I do sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, though, because... I, I feel like that's hard because you have this is. nice setup with like the chair. You have like the chair yes. that goes like up and down and stuff. And it turns. Yeah. You know, bringing in these little guys is not always ideal. And then sometimes like that's where the toll on your body comes in because when you have chairs like like regular chairs like this, <laughs> it 
you have to dig down sometimes, or they're too you they're too high up. Now they're like this, like you're trying to braid <laughs> hair. So yeah, I prefer being at home, but like I'm, I care a lot. So I accommodate my clients sometimes. Some people just feel more comfortable at home. Sometimes I do kids' hair, and their kids want to be at home. They don't want, like, you know, to be, or, like, their parents don't want to do the back and forth. They're like, yeah. it's pay. You know, I, but I'm going to charge some gas money, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. You got you to gotta charge gas money because yeah. now not only am I only getting $100, but that $100 I just use. Like ten dollars that they're trying to get to where I need to be. Yeah. So you gotta charge for gas. You gotta charge for gas. Especially with these four thirty eight prices. <laughs> Sickening. <laughs> yeah, so that is true. I do I'll do hair at some people's houses sometimes. It depends. But I will really try to get them yeah. To come to my <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But I feel like um once I get like my own place I wanted to be at my house, but I don't know. Like, especially when it comes to guys. Mm -hmm. How many guys house. do you do, though, that you don't know? Um, A decent amount. Not more than, like, regular female, random female braid hair, um, braiders or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Like, three or five, maybe. It just depends on what's going on. Mm -hmm. Or, like, how many... Like people's guys hair, I've been doing. So like, if I post that, that's when a lot more guys come around because they're like, "Oh, I like that." Like, you do hair? Uh, yeah, let me you know. That's when I'm like, okay. Girl, you know, know where I live. live here. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's been like that a few times. Like, my previous boyfriend, I'm like, "Yeah, I'm doing blah blah blah. What you, what are you gonna be doing? <laughs> just, just come over and see yeah. it at the house, or can I do it at your house, or you know, something like that." Yeah, because I'm a little scared, I ain't gonna lie. No, I get you. Yeah, I'm a little scared. <laughs> That's why, like, when I get my own place, I'm like, ooh, I don't know if I'm gonna wanna mm -hmm. do it, like, in my own house, because then they gonna know that I live alone. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Yeah. And, like, I struggle with conversation. That's, like, the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> it's so and hard to conversate with people. Yeah. Um, we just put on TV. Yeah, but some people like to. Oh, you know, that's you a do? long time to be talking though. Right? Like we know each other, and uh, you don't have to talk to me that whole time. <laughs> you really don't. <laughs> Just put in your little, you put your music on, or sit here watch this show, whatever. I didn't gave the remote, and you're still gonna talk. <laughs> <laughs> but some conversations are nice with customers. Some conversations mm -hmm. I do appreciate, and it's really nice to get to know some people sometimes. Mm -hmm. But then some customers, I'm just like, okay. Yeah, I don't know you like at all, so <laughs> I don't have anything to say at all. So it's like, in my head, it's awkward. It's probably really not, because mm -hmm. I think about like when you go to the salon, they don't even have TV. No, they just sit there. Yeah. So yeah. I don't. <laughs> it's, it's awkward in my head, so. Yeah. Have you ever turned people away? Like, have you done their hair once, and then you're like, oh, you're not coming back? I have. You have. I have. For what reason? Can you share? Um, yes. <laughs> I will openly share it so everybody knows. Um, so when I would go to people's houses sometimes, mm -hmm. time management is important. Mm -hmm. If I expect my clients to be on time, I have to be on time if I go to their house. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if I'm taking the time out of my day to be on time, be early, be there at the time that you gave me, mm -hmm. and you're not. <laughs> it just makes me mad. So they weren't at their own house? Let me tell you. <laughs> okay, so I did this client's hair twice. This is the male. So I pull up. Well, I always let my clients know I'm on my way. I live this far, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. Okay, you pull up. Hey, I'm here. Then they don't re reply. So now I'm just sitting outside. I'm just like... Mm -hmm. So then they be like, okay, I'm gonna open the door, right? Walk to the door. The door's not being opened. So I'm like, I'm like, am I missing something? With all your stuff, just seeing all my there. stuff at their front door, all weird and awkward. Mm -hmm. And like, they live with their parents. I don't know if they told their parents. I'm like, you know, they're, 
you know, this is awkward. Yeah. And then they had like a little bench by the door. So I, I just sat on the bench and I'm just like, okay, like, do I keep, or do I text him again? Like, hey, I'm like at the door. Mm-hmm. And he was like, okay. So then, like, when I tell you I sat at that door for like 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Mariana. Was this both times? No, the second time was different. I'm going to tell you about the second time. <laughs> So I sat in the door for like 15 minutes and I asked him, I'm like, you know, what took you so long to like open the door? He goes, oh, I'm detangling my hair. Mm. And I was just kind of like, but like, I do hair. Why you just didn't let me in and be like, hey, can you, I'm sorry my hair is not detangled. Can you help me? Or like, or sit in the house while I yeah. detangle your hair. <laughs> yeah. Or tell me that you're detangling your hair yeah. while I told you I was here. Yeah. You're just leaving me blank. <laughs> like, I have no idea what's happening here. I'm like, damn it. Am I even doing this hair anymore? <laughs> but I let it go because, like, that is it's not a big deal, but just know that's giving red flag. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So then the next time I did this man hair, mind you, I live far now in Lockport. That was a 30 minute drop. Mm-hmm. And I get there, I text the day before we talked about the time. If you pick the time, you should be on time. Mm-hmm. If you pick it. Mm-hmm. We talked about the time. I let him know I was on my way. I let him know I was there. No reply. Nothing. So mm-hmm. I always give my customers 15, 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes, if I don't hear from you, cancel. Mm-hmm. But I think I was already in the area somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like when he told me the time the day before, I think I planned, because I had oh. friends in Plainfield. Mm-hmm. I think I planned some type of schedule where I was already out there in that area yeah. doing other stuff. So I was already, like, fairly close. Yeah. So I just was there, expecting because we just talked about it. Everything's fine. Mm-hmm. But that's where I went wrong. So I sat there for, like, 15, 20 minutes. He never replied. So then I just went about my business. I went home. I was looking, I was looking mad, mm-hmm. because why are you not <laughs> answering the phone? That's not terrible. Yeah. Because, like, I came all this way to do your hair, accommodate you, because mm-hmm. you don't want to come to my house. Yeah. So, like, you know, I'm trying to be considerate, and you're not. Yeah. Why did this man text me back two hours later and going to say, sorry, I was asleep? I say, <laughs> yeah, no. This is the second time that you're not accommodating my time, my energy, my day. Yeah. So, I... I Peacefully, was like, you know, I can't do your hair anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, you know. Oh, you told him. Yeah, I sure did. Right when he texted me, <laughs> that he was asleep. I said, what do you mean? I said something like that. He was like, he had, what, what he was like much in the time. Yeah, like, yeah, he said he had that. Mm. But I know that you were in the same time zone. <laughs> because I had you on Snapchat. Like, you're a friend of friends. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know you're on a plane, but be for real here. So that just, it's just like he was inconsiderate for me, and I didn't like that. And then he asked me to come back. (laughs) It's been two hours. It it only takes me an hour and a half to do your hair. You think I'm going to come back two hours later? Yeah. And I still have a full, it was like nine and one. Mm -hmm. I still have a full day ahead of me. Yeah. I am not coming back. (laughs) Your $40, you can keep. You can keep it. So I was yeah. like, yeah, I cannot do your hair anymore. This is the second time mm-hmm. that you've been inconsiderate about my time. Mm-hmm. Like, this is time that I could be doing other people's hair. Yeah. Like, you know, it's just really rude. And then, like, the way he was going about it, it, it wasn't given that he was sorry. Yeah. He never said sorry. He just said, oh, I just woke up. Mm-hmm. Where are you at? Huh? <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> He's so, like, yeah. you need to wait outside his house? <laughs> Wanted a repeat of the first time, I guess. But yeah, so I was like, you know, I can't do your hair anymore. Like, it's not gonna work. And he was just like, huh? That's crazy. And <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, okay. And it's then he ended, up, um, he ended up blocking me. I like it how you blocked you. Right? Like, you were like, gonna like chase him. <laughs> I am not worried about you, sir. <laughs> but yeah. And I was just like, I really don't feel like I was wrong. So I didn't feel any type of way at all. No, I don't think so. So, yeah. I'm not worried about it. Yeah. <laughs> so you have not clients, clients come and go. And that's a part of being a hairstylist. You will literally get comment, uh, customers who do not care. Mm-hmm. They will come hours late. 
and be like, can you still braid my hair? <laughs> no, I cannot still braid your hair. Yeah. Like, I have <laughs> other clients. And then, like, when you were late, I probably didn't text somebody else. I'm like, hey, this opening is open. Mm-hmm. The one you were just asking for? Yeah, I got it. Because mm-hmm. there's people whose birthdays are coming up, holidays, mm-hmm. they want their hair done. There's always people. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And they, I will get people who... Where I'd be like, no, I can't, like, I'm busy, or sometimes, like, I'm taking a break from hair right now. They'd be like, oh, I guess you don't want no money. Um, I'm always, <laughs> I'm always get the money. <laughs> don't ever try to disrespect me. I'm going to make something <laughs> shake. Um, you can keep your $40, sir <laughs> and ma'am. It's okay. Yeah. Like, if I got to take this L, I'm taking this L. Mm-hmm. And that, and a lot of that also has to do with people when they're late. I would cancel your appointment after 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. If you're coming to my house, no communication or something like that, even if you did communicate, it's on mine. 30 minutes, babe. 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I will do that. And they're like, oh, that's crazy. Like, I guess you don't want this money. Baby, I'll put me tomorrow. <laughs> You gotta really stick up for yourself because no, if you yeah. don't, people will walk over you yeah. in industries. And I think that's with any business. If you mm-hmm. let your clients and customers control stuff, it, you're not gonna be as successful as you can be. Yeah. Now, granted, I'm not trying to do all that, but like, it still is important for you to stick up for yourself and have rules and regulations, unless mm-hmm. it's just, you're gonna be a hot mess. Yeah. You don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> Braiding hair is very interesting. Dealing with people is very, very interesting. Yeah. Do you like that part though? Um, it it can have its perks and, and like it can have its downfall, like, you know. But that's part of mm-hmm. like doing business stuff too. So like that's just things that you have to deal with. And all of it is learning experiences. Mm-hmm. Like with the guy story that I was just saying, do you know how many times I've had problems like that beforehand and we mm-hmm. still have them as a client yeah. and they still don't respect you, still don't have any boundaries, you know. And then at that point, it's like, you're too, like, do I say anything now? I've been letting mm-hmm. them do this for three years, yeah. like, you know. So you just got to find a signal for yourself. So, like, it's like, mm-hmm. you know, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. It's okay. What advice would you give to people looking to become um, hair braiders? Ooh, okay, advice. You have to have a lot of patience, a lot of patience to be a hairstylist. Mm-hmm. And that comes with your clients. You got to have patience with them. You got to have patience doing the hair. Mm-hmm. Because if you start, like, rushing and stuff, it's not going to be good work. You know, you want, you want your stuff to be nice. Mm-hmm. You want to take your time with what you're doing. So you definitely have to have a lot of patience, and you have to be considerate and respectful. A lot of people are not. I know y'all see the little TikTok videos where the braiders are doing this, they're doing that. They were late for 30 minutes because they had to pick their kids up. And like, mm-hmm. you know, if you want your people to be on time, you should, you should be on time. Yeah. Or like when people refund money too, like if a, a customer of mine says that they don't like their hair or something like that, if I have the time, I'm going to try to accommodate them the best that I can. Mm-hmm. And some braiders are like, oh, I'll just tell you, you didn't say anything when you were there. Mm-hmm. But I feel like sometimes, like, I know if I didn't like something, I'm just like, ooh, I don't know. Maybe it just needs a second to grow. Mm-hmm. You don't always speak in that moment. Yeah. You know, sometimes you're just like, oh, no, this is not. Mm-hmm. No, let me text <laughs> her back. Yeah. So I would just say just respectfulness and be considerate of, you know, yourself and your client. You know, make sure that it just works both ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say that. And it takes time. Don't expect every hairstyle to be perfect beforehand. Mm-hmm. That's important because there are still hairstyles where I'm just like, oh, you know, that's not how I thought it was going to be. It's still nice, but like, yeah, it can always be perfect, especially when you're learning new stuff. So, like that butterfly, if I ever try that butterfly, it's probably not going to be perfect the first time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's why you got practice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. No Do you have anything else you want to add before we um, switch into trivia? I don't think so. No. Okay, we'll jump into some trivia. So I just have like 
trivia about um, Afro and black hair. Okay. True or false? Afro hair grows at a slower pace than straight hair. Is there a right answer to this? Do you look these up? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> um, that is true. Ding. You are correct. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Hairstylist Andre Walker invented a numerical grading system for hair, for human hair, in what year? I'll give you options. 1997, 1999, 2001, and 2003. 99? Mm -mm, 97. Uh, I thought about saying it, I was like, that was only, I was in 97? Is that like the 4C stuff? I'm assuming, because that's the type of hair texture. Yeah, I thought it was just more recent. Okay. Yeah, I thought that was always a thing. Maybe not. They didn't pay us no mind that you think. Yeah, I feel like I just recently started like hearing about the different textures when like it when I've seen it on social media. Oh. Um, but I mean, maybe it's been around. When I asked my hairstylist about it, like at the salon, she says that she doesn't know about that stuff. So I feel yeah. like if it was around, wouldn't she have been taught it? She probably know. See, when you go to like hair school, lash school barber school, all that stuff, depending on where you go, you don't always learn the same stuff in mm -hmm. how you were taught. Yeah. Some people get certifications, which are not licenses, certifications to do what they do, but that doesn't always make you go in debt. Um, and then some people will go to cosmetology school where you would sit and you learn a little bit about lashes, you learn a little about hair, you learn mm -hmm. about nails, but then you only go into the like profession that you want to go into, yeah. you don't know everything. Yeah. So it's just like depends on where you go, what you do. Cool. That's all the questions I had. Um, I was not keeping track. I don't know how many you got right or how many you got wrong. I think I did decent. If I had to guess, like three wrong, four right. Okay. Yeah, we'll go with that. Mm -hmm. Four out of seven. Yeah. I don't think that's. Passing if you are in school. It's 60%, isn't it? Oh, okay, it's, sure. I don't really know. Yeah. 60. We'll say you pass. Yeah. I learned a lot from you, so I'll say you, you're knowledgeable in this subject. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Any last things before we finish? Um, no, I just appreciate you for putting me on your podcast. I had mm -hmm. fun. I talked a lot in my mouth. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's yeah. really young. I'm, I'm excited, excited for this episode. Me too. I'm yeah. not lie. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Young or Dumb. I hope you enjoyed the subject and learned something new. Stick around and listen to another episode after you subscribe. And remember, be happy and be chill.